Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here at the DARPA Robotics Challenge in the Expo area, and we actually found multi-rotors here. So this is Patrick, you are CEO of Flyability, and your multi-rotor is called Gimbal, because it looks like a ball and it uses an interesting gimbal system. Can you tell me about the system? Absolutely. So the idea of this robot is to be the first uh, collision tolerant robot. So what we're doing is uh, instead of avoiding collisions, we are tolerating collisions. That makes it a really robust uh, robot for uh, real life uh, situations such as inspection, search and rescue, reconnaissance situation where we cannot avoid all collisions and we have to tolerate them. Absolutely, we've seen some like quadcopters for example, the really hard external shells, but once they're knocked, the flight becomes more difficult. The system you've designed here looks like there, there is like a rigid shell around it, but how does the flight mechanics work within that? Right, there's basically two things happening when a quadcopter hits uh, a wall. First of all, the propellers often stop and that makes the robot fall. But even if there's a protection around it and the, the props are not uh, impacted by the, the collision, then you, know, you have a big torque on the robot. It makes it tilt and fall. What we're doing with this robot is, in addition to having this shell, we decoupled the outside of the robot from the inside. So basically, the inside of the robot does not feel collisions when it happens. And that's because there's a, a gimbaled system. It looks absolutely. like there's a the two axis here. Um, absolutely, so the inside can, can rotate completely freely with regards to, to the outside. So that means that we can really fly in very confined space, bump on obstacles, roll on the ground, roll on the ceilings, on the floor, uh, without having to, to really care about it. Can you talk to me about the, the flight system a bit? Because it's a unique configuration of the propellers. Right, so we are using two counter-rotating propellers for this, uh, for this robot that provide the thrust. Uh, we're using that rather than a quad just for um, having the maximum thrust density uh, within a small um, area like a sphere. So we, we need this setup so that we are able to lift uh, about 400 grams that this robot weighs. And then at the bottom we have control vanes. So that's, that's four control vanes that allow the robot to pitch and roll. So it's slightly different than what you see on a quad. It's a little more complex, but that's what we can best fit in a sphere like that. And for the flight mechanics, because you're using the two propellers, mostly pushing down, and then also the fins, is it better for hovering, for turning corners? What are the flight mechanics like? Uh, I would say it's a little less agile than a quad for doing acrobatics. That's not the right configuration. But in terms of hovering, navigating, exploring, it's, it's as efficient as that. And uh, we're having great results with this, uh, with this setup. All right, and so for flyability as a company, what, is your, what are your plans for this? Is it going to be a consumer product or is this something that someone can build themselves? So um, as a startup company, we started exploring the different market options. What really stood out in the beginning is industrial inspection. Uh, we're having a lot of people who are interested for uh, in investigating the inside of power plants, such as the boiler room, uh, the underdeck of bridges where you have to fly within a metallic structure, the inside of tanks, vessels, also security um, and law enforcement who want to do reconnaissance inside buildings. So those are going to be our first markets because those are people with whom we work very early on and fine tuning the product. So we already sold the first unit to, uh, to players like that uh, in the industry who are helping us uh, really improve it before we go commercial. And this is planned for probably the end of the year. Uh, in parallel to that, we'd love to have a consumer product because uh, you know it's the first robot with whom we can interact really and that can interact with its environment. So it has an amazing play value and uh, we're starting right now to work on something more mass market and at a much lower price range. I'd love to see that. Love to put lots of cameras and sensors on this thing. It looks like it's, it's really cool. Can't wait to see it in action. Thank you so much, Patrick, you. for sharing with us flyability and the gimbal. Thanks. Right.